Well, hey there, people. Well, I started putting together a CO2 generator. Um, I got some components put together. I figured, why not share with you guys? I'm not sure if you guys know how to make a CO2 generator. I do, so why not share it with you? Anyway, uh, this is what you'll need. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is drill some holes into these caps. Uh, I'm going to drill two holes in one and one in the other. Um, you guys can't see that from here. Come closer. So I couldn't find the right size bit, but this will do. I mean, you can use a knife to gouge a hole in there or whatever. Anyway, we're going to just drill a hole right in the center of this thing. And now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to gouge the hole to the size of my hose. Little by little, grab my hose, stick it in the hole, a little more, so you want this hose to fit real tight so it doesn't leak any air. And that's why we need the hot glue. Okay, there we go. That's pretty tight. Probably won't even need any hot glue, but we'll put some just in case. Okay, let's do the other cap. So this one here will need two holes. My drill is dying, but that's okay. Okay, we'll gouge those out, and I'll show you what's going on. Well, I pulled out my prototype. As you can see, it's still bubbling a bit, but it's due for a recharge. Uh, this one's about a month old and it's still going pretty good. All right, so I drilled out my caps. Uh, let's see how much hose we need. I bought 10 feet of hose. Uh, that's all they had at Canadian Tire, but we don't need 10 feet. Uh, what we need is 36 inches and I believe it's 21 inches. Yeah, 21 inches. So 36 inches and 21 inches. I'll show you how I insert them to the caps and I'll, I'll explain why. Alright, well the first cap with the one hole in it, you want to insert it and let it stick out just about an inch. This cap's going to go into your reactor. And the second end of that same hose that goes into the reactor will go into the other cap. And this hose will go into the other bottle right to the bottom. This hose here, you want to just put it in just a tad, another about an inch. It'll make more sense when it's all together. The first bottle, we're going to call this the reactor bottle because uh, that's where all the magic happens. First thing you want to do is add two cups of sugar to it. I just so happen to have two cups of sugar left. I don't know why I'm measuring it. I already measured it out. There's two cups. Alright, we've got the two cups in there. And now what we want to do, add some water to it and get it all mixed up. So I'm going to put some warm water. Um, I'm going to put it about up to here of warm water. Okay, let's do that now. So I've added my water to my sugar. Now I'm going to give it a good shake. You want all that to be dissolved. That's good enough. Uh, now for the yeast. The yeast, you want one tablespoon. Where's my glass? And you want to activate the yeast before you mix it with the sugar. So I'm going to put one tablespoon in the glass of water separately. Just like that. And I'm just going to stir it, activate it a little bit. Just a few seconds. You 
can see it bubbling a little bit, maybe not. Okay, we'll add that with the sugar in the water. And we'll want to shake that up together. We'll mix that real good. Okay, in this bottle, we'll put the cap with just the one tube sticking out into it. Just like that. Real tight. There you go. Real tight. And the second bottle, uh, we're going to fill it halfway with uh, warm water. Doesn't really matter, but we're going to fill it halfway with water. And this end will go into right at the bottom of the jug. Right at the bottom. Screw that on. There we go. Okay, now we're activated. It should be producing CO2 and within within an hour, I'd say, probably a half hour, but we'll say an hour. And from here, I'm gonna grab my glue stick. I don't have my glue gun. Wherever that happened to that. I think I lent it out. Who knows? Anyway, I'm just gonna grab a lighter. Since I can't find my glue gun, we'll just do it this way. Same thing. Like I said, I probably don't have to do this. It's pretty sealed. It's nice and tight, but we'll do it anyway. Nice and messy. Just like that. We'll do it to the other two. This is uh, for indoor plants, obviously. You can probably use this in an aquarium too, eh? Just stick this in. Uh, this hose here, that's the hose that the CO2 comes out of. So what you want to do with this, is you want to put it under your plants. Because plants, they breathe from under the leaves. A lot of people think they breathe from the top of the leaves, but they breathe from under the leaves. Well, the reason the duct tape and the uh, zip ties are optional, because you can use either or, I guess, or if you want to, you can just leave it like this. But I just like to make it easier to carry around when it's time to fill up. Had to add a zip tie. And it cost me a lot of money on zip ties here. There you go. Done. The old one's pumping pretty good. I'm going to leave it. I was going to change all the juices, but it's still pumping really good, actually. Yeah, that's about a month old. Oh, well, there you go. That's how I make a CO2 generator. Like I said, this one's about a month old and it's pumping pretty good, so. Usually I'll let them go till there's no bubbles at all, then I change them. So I'll just throw that back under the plants and uh, we'll be good to go. So hopefully that helped you inside growers a little bit. Save a little money on buying packages of CO2 or the tanks of CO2. CO2 in a budget. So we're about 20 minutes in and it looks like we have life. <laughs> 